three is meant to be a journey, both the album as a whole and a lot of the songs in themselves. This material that ranges from a breakup to, to a fictional psychedelic love story to songs that, that reflect on like being stuck in the daily grind and missing the beauty around you to coming out of darkness into a period of happiness but feeling like the darkness is going to come back to like solitude and lockdown and it was kind of like embracing solitude for the first time in my life and then coming back into the world and collaborating with some amazing musicians. So it's a collection of all kinds of tracks but it's, it's supposed to take someone on a journey. Well, I was born in New York uh, and then we moved to Singapore when I was two years old and I grew up there basically for like 15, 16 years. So I didn't really know who I was. Like people would always ask me, like, where are you from? And I would say, Singapore? But then as time went by, like I realized I'm not Singaporean at all. And then people would ask me where I was from later in life and I'd say from the US. But I still felt this dissonance because ethnically I'm not from the US. But then saying I'm Indian also didn't feel fully right in some ways because like I don't really speak the language. I haven't spent time there other than visiting my, my grandparents. So it was kind of like not really sure what my identity was. And um, later in life I learned about trying to embrace that and trying to like acknowledge the different parts of myself and not have to have a singular identity because that's what or you're told that you should be. There's this thing that's been written about called third culture kids. It's when your parents are from a different place that you grew up in, uh, and that's a different place from, you, from where you were born. I was very lucky to be exposed to like a lot of different cultures, a lot of different food, the ability to travel to a lot of different countries in Southeast Asia, and I think is the reason that it kickstarted my love for music from other cultures as well. And I remember when I first came across Brazilian music, my mind was blown. And I first came across West African music, my mind was blown. Meeting people from different cultures and just like taking in different influences, I think has rubbed off in a way that like, when it comes to music, I want to reflect that as well. I try to speak up to be seen. So after I, uh, I quit my corporate job in like basically the start of 2018 and made a slight life pivot to, to working on music. I like moved to LA. I took night classes in production while working. And um, like part, it was something I realized I needed to be part of my life. And in LA, I made, I made collaborator friends, uh, producer friends. And that was my, my first taste of working in studios, working in Logic. When I went back to New York, a few friends and I built a music studio in Gowanus and just made like so many demo tracks. <laughs> like there are maybe upwards of a hundred demo tracks just sitting around. Like of my own, of course, but also with other collaborators and producers. A lot of those collaborative projects were like also in a time of my life where um, the thinking brain was off. And that again gets at like the, the theme of, of this album and like feeling free. But, but it was at a time where like music was so like innocent and adolescent and naive. It was just like pure unadulterated months and years of creation with friends. And I think the next project I'd like to work on is releasing some of that collab material because it's such a big part of my process. Like even though the music's under my name, like I try to go with other people's visions as well because they've been doing it for longer than I have or they have a unique perspective or like just not limiting it to what my brain has. I had an identity crisis when COVID hit because I couldn't collaborate with anyone anymore. It just went to be a fully solo process. When I first started writing those demos in lockdown, I was like, all right, this could be something I could explore. And also probably good for me to figure out how to do shit on my own without anyone else. It was probably the most fulfilling thing like the first demo I made uh, three years ago. It was like, oh wow, this is what it means to actually make, make my own thing. I think I hit a point in my life where it was like a necessary transition. So it was, it was like forced upon me, but in a way that I was like, oh, I actually really need this. 
I was such an extrovert, like earlier and in my mid 20s. I was just really bad at spending time alone, but I realized it was like I was putting off like self growth and self development. The process of making the music solves the identity crisis, but like it was only through the act of making the music that I could see that. Like one one thing I've had to reckon with that's been tough is that like I I feel like I have a lot of sides to myself. Like I can't just hone in on one specific sound for for so many songs because like I'm inspired by so many things and like I'm easily moved by the weather or the season or like the place I'm in. So like I could create a super dark track if it's two weeks in London without sun. But then on a sunny day in the summer, like I want to make something funky and like Sharon Jones and Tim Maya inspired. So like I think it's always going to be a struggle for that. But but to me, like some of the bass sounds on the record, like we were talking about with the chorus and the phaser, um, like on top of like just like a funky bass line, to me that's something I hope you know is unique and and that people like associate with with my sound. Can we expose the bass again? <laughs> <laughs> it's already kind of exposed. Yeah, because it's kind of like similar to the intro bass thing. Yeah, so we made this outro, and, and then I cut it into the oh, intro as well. Because I was like, it could be cool to enter this world of this track. Like, through that. Like, basically mm -hmm. bookend it with this groove. Yeah. And, and, and to me, it kind of reflected like what the song is about. Because it's like, you know, what we don't see is what, about missing kind of the beauty around us, like experiences around us by being so stuck in the work grind mm. and so to me something about that dirty groove and i think why one of the dirty outro is because like there's an anger to me associated with that sensation mm -hmm. of like fuck i'm so i'm working so hard I, I i it's like another few months has gone by since i was last happy or since i was last present it reflects the work grind but also reflects like sometimes the the like anger I feel like at myself or at like circumstances that I can't just you know be experiencing the beauty or the happiness all the time. Mm -hmm. Just Breathe is like the short intro song to the album. It's almost just like a reminder to myself. It's like a almost like a chant, like an incantation because um, it's the same line, the same verse that repeats over and over a few times. Then as the layers in the song kind of add on like synths and pianos and guitars just kind of layer in and um, I kind of wanted to like juxtapose this idea of like meditation and just breathe and stay calm with like the chaos of the song and the production and to me that's like trying to stay calm and and mindful and present in like my whole life which has been living in big cities like how do I try to find that oasis and that sense of calm uh, when there's like chaos all around me. The idea started with uh, this field recording that a friend of mine sent me while he was living in South Sudan and he recorded um, a bunch of women singing like a joyous celebratory chant that I thought had such a good like life and energy and um, happy energy to it. For me it's like a reminder to myself to just breathe. It's also like let's if you're gonna go listen to this album then like I also want you as an audience member to like breathe and like have that presence and have that moment with yourself. One of the main sentiments under the title and the concept of To Feel Free um, was like the lack or like the inability I had of literally feeling free in my own skin or like out in the world. I think at the time of when I was going into writing music on my own, that first COVID lockdown was also the time of a lot of social and racial justice issues. I've always been an overthinker, but I've also in that time became like hyper self-aware of my skin color and my place in the world. And also you know, thinking about the identity crisis, like being a brown man in New York, it's, it's like kind of hard to know where you fit because I think a lot of the discourse is about like white versus black there. And I'm somewhere in the middle, you know. So the, 
the reason behind like the strong like emotion in that song and wanting to let loose in like the big sense is because it was just this this like anger I felt about not being able to let go and again like turn off the thinking brain and um, just like create freely it was a hard time to to just feel normal and uh, everything felt really heavy and ever since then I became super you know just very aware of of like what is my place in this world and and what does it mean to be uh, like a person of color today and what does it mean to also be someone who, who can be creative in that like how can I put that to the side and just have like a creative creative practice as well and as we like move past that into the next generation like how can we let people of any skin color and any background be whatever they want to be in society. Okay.